everyone. So my name is Nicole Kong and I'll be talking about coding escape rooms. So the first thing is what are escape rooms anyway? Well, the origins of the escape room come from the point and click video game. And it generally has the following elements. The first thing is it needs to have a locked door. Second, objects to manipulate. And third, hidden clues and secret compartments. Usually there's puzzles of some sort that you have to solve in order to progress through the escape room and finally escape. So escape rooms and education have kind of exploded in popularity. And the reason why is obviously because they're rather easy to set up. They're really great for remote learning. They're immersive. But the best thing I always like to focus on is having students create their own escape rooms really engages them to be readers and players as well as being writers and coders. So the platform we'll be using to create our, um, this escape room is elementary. And the reason behind it is that it's just easy to use. Um, you can code using a visual coding environment that's node based and it looks a lot like PowerPoint. So it's a really easy entry point for people who are non coders or really young kids. And the final thing is it's really easy to share and embed published stories. It's just a link. You share it out. Boom. People can play it anywhere. So, what do you need in order to get started with creating escape rooms? Well, obviously internet connection, laptop, tablet, or computer device. You can read escape room stories on mobile, but you do need to have a, a bigger device to create. And finally, um, in our case, uh, we'll be using elementary. So you'll need an elementary account that's free to get started with. And you can create a classroom of up to 35 students for free on that as well. So, I'm just going to jump into one of the stories that I created with my uh, narrative game design club that meets Saturdays at 2 p.m. So this is a club that is all about narrative game design geared for grades five and up. Generally, I have teen girls that end up showing up, um, but it's open to the public. So you're free to join in anytime. And we cover all sorts of different coding concepts and different projects. And I try to keep things uh, different every time. So this is what we were able to cover within the one hour session. And we were able to create uh, two puzzles. They're kind of similar, but they have different mechanisms or similar coding mechanisms behind them. And you'll take take a look at it. So this um, escape room in particular, I wanted to cover the concept of Booleans. Um, so Booleans being true or false uh, data types. So in our case, we have puzzle one is false, puzzle two is true. We have two puzzles and the goal is that we're going to set puzzle one to true once we're able to complete it. And then we'll use a Boolean logic operator to do a logic gate. And if we have both of them to be true, then we can exit and escape this scary Halloween house. So let's take a look at the first puzzle. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. And here is a very simple um, puzzle using colored letters. So you look at it, you see that there are pink letters. What do you do with this pink letters? Well, take them out and try to rearrange them in some sort. And we'll be able to spell the word spooky. So we also coded an Easter egg and the Easter egg is this key here. So you can actually go through this and not pick up the key, but if you pick up the key, let's see what will happen later. So I can type in spooky. And now puzzle one is set to true. So let's now take a look at puzzle two. It's the same idea, colored letters, and this time it spells out candy. So you might say, okay, I want candy. Oh, I just got dragged away by monsters. So let's try again. Okay, so it's not candy, but we have candies on this page. So we're going to try counting the candies. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's put the answer to be six. So now we can exit the house. Yay, I completed the two puzzles. And you'll notice we have a treasure chest here. This treasure chest 
um, you can only click on it if you picked up the key. If you did not pick up the key, you can't click on it. And if you click on it, you'll be able to open it and get all of the treasure. So now let's take a look at what the code looks like. You can remix the story just like you can in Scratch and remixing it copies the all of the pages and all of its code for you to take a look. So I just want to really briefly let you guys take a look at the way at the way we handle variable templates. So you'll notice we have these little curly brackets and the curly brackets are um, holding the variable. So I like to call them mustache um, because that's something memorable for kids rather than the curly brackets. And that is a technical term mustache. So it's perfectly okay to say mustache. <laughs> So you'll notice that it works a lot like PowerPoint or Google Slides. You can, you know, change the background image, things like that. Um, you can also then move things around, type in it, etc. add images, all the works. So we're going to take a look at the event graph and the event graph is where we code our story. And on this page, we are doing a couple of things. The first thing we're doing is we're locking the navigation on this page. And this is really useful for escape rooms, choose your own adventures, coding an app, um, anything that you want to make sure that the user cannot, you know, navigate uh, without your permission, essentially. So they can't swipe left and right like normal. They can only click on the buttons that you make clickable, or in this case, images that you make clickable. So. I can only click on these two images and when I click on them, I will go to a different page. So go to page three and go to page four. And this page, you'll see that we have our um, Boolean, Boolean variables and we have our logic gate. So on elementary, there are three data types. There are text variables, Boolean variables and number variables. So that's all fine and dandy. And let's take a look. So if both of these are true, then on page start, I'm going to fade in my button. And when I click on it, I can go to page six. So that's basically how the code will work. Obviously this is for, like I said, um, students who are already comfortable with coding, but you can have something more simplified that only deals with, uh, buttons that you can navigate back and forth from and some maybe some animation rather than a text input. Um, so let's take a look at the text input and I have videos that cover how to do all of these coding concepts. And in our case here, we are going to set whatever we put in the input field to the variable player answer one. And then we're going to have a conditional. So if else statement that if it equals spooky, then I want to set my Boolean variable to true and go to page two. And then the second one is else I want to go to page five. So this is much more um, advanced. And I do want to show you something that is more geared for beginners of coding and how you can introduce something fun like escape rooms, even for people who um, only maybe know what a function is. So let's take a look at another template. So here we have virtual escape room template and I have a background music playing and I just wanna show you um, the first puzzle. And for those of you who maybe just want to create an escape room and not have to really code everything, you can use this as a template and we've seen it already used in other stories. Um, all you have to do is, you know, fill in the blanks for your hook. What do you want to say? What's your mission? And you can just uh, set up your choices the way you want and the answers for what you want and then maybe code some animations. Okay, so here's the first puzzle. It's a multiple choice question. So this is um, just using the go to page function block and that's it. So then you can create a simple escape room using this. Um, and this has been done already by generally third or fourth, fifth graders. Um, and they're able to get that done pretty uh, fine and dandy. They, they, love, they love using the go to page block. <laughs> because they can use it for choose your own adventures as well, escape rooms. And I think right now what's trending is uh, creating among us type choose your own adventures. So a lot of fan fiction work is going on. And my 10 minutes are up. So 
please take a look at the YouTube channel. Um, I have videos on this escape room as well as more. I'm working with Daniel Abisar, which is an amazing um, Israel uh, escape room specialist. He literally creates escape rooms as his job. He creates them for educational institutions, government institutions, tourism, and all that. And he has a ton of puzzles that um, we want to share with all of you. So they will, we will be releasing the videos for that probably in the next this week, next week, something along those lines. And we're really excited to share all these puzzles with you guys. And then um, just make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you are interested in running your own story coding club, I have all the information for that on the YouTube channel as well. And it goes through pretty much everything from what I use to the lessons to everything else. So let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email. My Twitter is at Nico Rars and email will be in the description below. So Thank you so much for joining me and have a great day.